in this video I think it's going really well and then it isn't well it's a beautiful scene here in paradise um, yeah very pleasant scenes um, random bits of 2CV discarded all over the place um, but um, yeah we must crack on um, trying to avoid the sunburn this morning um, so yeah the plan is to get that shield fitted and um, the fan I might actually put the alternator on because I might as well actually do the job properly um, I'll probably put the air filter on because um, I'm going to be blasting all the crud out of the engine with a cooling fan and uh, don't want any of it ending up back inside the engine and um, yeah we'll give her a run and um, hopefully at that point we can go for a drive of, uh, I might need to do some tidying up to actually free her from the mess that is the garage so, someone suggested I could do this as you know an art ins installation the Tate Modern and yeah I can I can see where you're coming from um, while, while we've got the engine apart um, it occurs to me that this engine has got oil leaking all over the place um, certainly the oil consumption has been quite horrific since I got this engine back together I'm not sure where it's leaking from but perhaps now's the time to be glad I'm swapping it for another engine it, telling that the um, engine I've just fitted is rather more oil tight than this one appears to be um, but there we go right I'm gonna crack on oh I hooked you on the coil and um, yeah get this thing back together Oh, I should add, um, I'm struggling to keep up with the comments this week, as you can imagine. I'm struggling to keep up with the editing as well. Uh, I somehow managed to shoot two hours and 43 minutes of footage that ended up being the last three quarter of an hour video. So um, I just left the camera running while I did a lot of tinkering. But in the end, I decided it wasn't really um, worth showing that much detail because um, yeah, I just haven't got time to edit that many files. So sorry, um, but I'm going to crack on and um, refit these things. I mean, the, the rubber mat is held in just by those two bars on the floor. So it's just a collection of 8mm headed bolts to hold that in with the two bars. We don't need the points box, that's now history. Um, and um, yeah, then I can get the alternator in the fan in. I have to tidy up the wiring a bit maybe. Might be a good idea. Reconnect the choke cable and then we're good to go. All right, we've um, got air filter assembly back on, coil is ready to go, at least for a rough thing. Alternator's back on, fan is back in. So we're definitely getting there, but I thought I need to crank it over to get the um, oil pressure up. And I thought, might as well see what the compression's doing this morning after a bit of a run yesterday. Um, I will need to connect the battery. I find that's often helpful when wanting to start a vehicle. And um, right, we should give her a crank, see what happens. Where are we today? Yeah, it's still leaking back a bit, isn't it? So getting on for 120, I think really we'd want to see closer to 150 if the high compression engine before was doing 180. But um, now we've got her all back together, we can give her a longer run and hopefully things will improve but if we're over a hundred oh sorry you just sat getting a view of my backside if um, she's doing over a hundred I'm pretty confident she'll um, start even if she isn't holding that compression at the moment put ear defenders on before doing that I didn't and uh, maybe living to regret that that's um, almost as loud as machine head in 1999 at the Wolverhampton Civic but um, running beautifully idling spectacularly well 
So um, I think now the thing to do is to finish off getting her back together. We'll get the exhaust on to save my ears and my poor neighbours. Uh, we'll get the headlamp bar on and then before we put the wings on I think we'll go for a drive because that makes it easy to just inspect what's going on. On the driveway, I'm not going to drive on the Queen's Highway with no um, bodywork going on. Um, but yeah, pleased with that. Very pleased. Let's see what she sounds like now. for a drive. sounds pretty good, there's oil burned off the exhaust manifold there because I've grabbed hold of it and uh, got oil all over it. That sounds pretty good, I'm pretty happy with that. Feels okay, obviously not got the 652 kick. Um, carburetor jetting is entirely wrong at this point because I've still got the 652 jets in. So um, I need to get some new jets. Bit close to hitting my catch can there, that could have been um, messy. Brilliant, we'll leave it ticking over for a bit, I think. I'll start reassembling the front end. Really am blowing the cobwebs out. She'll get us to Croatia now. I've had my success brew and very tasty it was and now I'm ripping the carburetor apart to change the jets. Um, the jets are, uh, it had 115s on primary and secondary. Um, here's one of them. Uh, you're never going to be able to read that but it does say 115 on it. It'll never focus ever because this camera doesn't seem very keen on focus. Oh don't know, there you go, look it shows 115, it's just very slow. Um, so yeah, 115 secondary, that just screws out of that hole down there, there we go, and uh, now I need to get the primary out, and the primary is located down here, um, and you get in via a hole, there's a bolt hole in the side, so you remove the bolt to get access so you can get a screwdriver in. Uh, get a dinky little thing out, there we go, and um, somewhere on there it'll say 115 as well. That looks more like 110. Now 110 isn't too bad. Um, I'll never focus on that either, I'm sure. And there you go. It can do focus. So yeah, I've got a 110 primary. And I think 107 is the recommendation. Um, but the important thing is to change the um, secondary, really. So... Um, I'm just going to go and seek a bit of advice because um, people generally agree that you should um, increase the size of the primary for modern fuels. Um, secondary can stay as it is and I found the correct secondary I think. Um, secondary I've got is a 90. There we go, um, I've um, spoken to that there Jono at Peak2CV who has at least confirmed the primary size of 102 is probably the one to go for. 
Um, so we'll fit the 102, not the 110 that's part of the Burton kit. 107 is actually the recommendation for modern fuels, but um, that's the 102, so we'll put the 102 back in, these tiny little things, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll call that good to go. And uh, then I'll put a 90 in rather than the 115 as the secondary. Um, may yet change to a 107, but 110 probably is a bit much um, for an engine like this um, in standard form. There we go, carburetor's back on. Um, because I'm me, I um, got that the wrong side of the bar that operates the choke flap, so um, that was all fun. Almost forgot to put the bolt back in the side of the carburetor, that would have been fun as well. Um, so we'll see if she starts up. There's a bit of carb cleaner in there, but she might be a bit low on fuel. Fill the fuel bowls back up, you see. Yeah, you can you can see how much crud she blew out with a fan earlier. Ugh. Right, we'll call that job done. The idle should come down a bit as well. When I did my first test run, um, the choke was just sticking slightly open. So um, I think I've sorted that by adjusting the cable position. So now we should be good. So it is time to um, get the air filter hose back on and then, um, oh, strimmers, joyous, um, body work and go for a test drive. She's back out, lights seem to work. We can consider that job done, I think. I'm going to clean my hands up because I just ran out of gloves entirely. And um, test drive. Just before I go for my test drive, and you'll see I'm wearing appropriate headgear, a lot of people saying, why didn't I just helicoil the original engine? So let's take a look at the engine that was in. Here is the engine, and uh, the problem is this stud has pulled out of that thread. So um, yes, I could he helicoil or time cert it um, to put a thread insert in um, to repair it and it'd be good to go again. But um, to do that, you have to take the barrel off. To get the barrel off, you've got to take the head off and um, suddenly you're getting into a much bigger job. Um, I am really not happy dismantling an engine to that degree to then try and trust it for a 4,000 mile journey. Especially as I think there must be something wrong in this cylinder. There is a bit of a tapping noise going on this side. Uh, I think there's a fundamental issue and uh, has, that has caused that, overloaded that stud. So um, I've become very unhappy with this engine. It's also leaking oil quite badly all over the place. It's also drinking oil to a terrifying degree. So I think the best thing to do with this engine is um, leave it here, frankly, and we'll deal with it when I get back, when there's no um, time rush. Uh, it's gonna be a bit strange going down to 602, but I think it's time for a test drive. Right, it's the first chance I've really had to um, assess a 602 against a 652. The clutch is still hissing as it um, cleans up that rusty flywheel. CV turn in circle, not the best. Seatbelt might be an idea, I suppose. We're not on the public highway just yet, so it's all right. So, stage one, she's a bit low on fuel, so we'll go and get some more. There we go, I'm just waiting for it to pick up there. Okay, though, no untoward noises. There's plenty of untoward smells, but um, 
Oh yeah. I've got the um, hesitation on throttle application. That's why people fit a bigger primary jet. First hill climb. Feels okay. I'm deliberately not absolutely hammering it because this engine has not seen any use for so so long I mean I've had this engine six years sitting in a corner of the garage so um, and I've no idea when it was last actually used in a car or how many miles it's done it feels very tight and together to me though tweet the idle up a bit more Oh, that might have been the wrong way. Now that should be more throttle. I just knock that little air breather off. Uh, I use copper grease um, to help seal the exhaust, so that's what's burning off. But yeah, everything looks nice and dry. So I think we can consider stage one a success. Excellent. All right, let's see if we can get a ride, Lynn. Could be that we've ended up clogging the um, idle jet up. It's a little bit burr, 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 but um, we'll see how she goes at that. feel a bit slow. Just shows how important the numbers are at this level. I chatted to someone the other day online who reckons the Burton 652 is about 32 brake horsepower um, compared to 29 originally. So it sounds like absolutely nothing, but what we haven't got is any clear figures for the torque increase, which I think is what really makes the difference. that mid-range grunt she just doesn't have anymore. But otherwise, I would say this is um, feeling fine and dandy. But I'm going to go for an extended test drive. Um, so we'll um, just see how she is. Uh, I mean, all I can do now is just keep driving her and um, putting the miles on and hoping she continues to stay healthy. The idle's a bit up and down, I'm not entirely sure why. Interesting, may investigate. For now, still enjoying the sunshine. For a bit of a treat, I thought I'd come to Newquay. Uh, not that Newquay, there's one in Wales as well. This one has two words. There's a 
our space, I think. Marvellous. There we go. Beautiful Nuki. So, uh, still running well. You've noticed she's idling um, a bit better as well. And um, yeah, I'm feeling the need for ice cream. Oh, well, we're just in time for the watch the lifeboat coming ashore. A little off road sea tractor thing. Right, I think this test should continue. Oh, get the lock on. I'll take you on a quick tour of Nuki. It's um, well worth a visit really, it's a very sweet little uh, town, obviously very touristy, um, lots of ice cream, uh, boats, sand, um, twee little buildings. I went to the um, gelato on the um, left hand side there and had a very very tasty raspberry and white chocolate ice cream, I don't even like white chocolate. Slightly dozy tourists, as you'd expect. There you go, man in fantastic hat. There's even a shop selling shells, apparently. And coconuts with faces on, apparently. Bizarre. But she's um, continuing to go well, so I think we'll say that's enough testing. Just. Uh, um, yeah, I've had my delicious ice cream. It's my reward for several days tinkering. And um, we shall get back to um, base. Give her a bit of a check over. Oh, just managed to double the clutch into first and I had to stop anyway. seem a very sweet little engine. My suspicion is it's one that hasn't covered many miles. It just feels quite tight and um, yes, runs very smoothly. I'm just having a bit of nostalgia going on because I'm following a purple Vauxhall Corsa. Uh, the Corsa B, it was the um, first Corsa for us Brits but the second for you Europeans and uh, I passed my driving test in a Corsa B. Very much learned to drive in one, in fact. And uh, one of them was purple, so um, five, three door rather than the five door in front of us. And um, I'm not ashamed to say I find that an appealing little car. Wrong. We were too polite. We were both offering the other the chance to go first. And this is the stunning run down to Aberaeron, where the sea just gets bigger and bigger and you feel like you're gonna drive into it. Good place for dolphin spotting. But uh, yeah, Caradigion, Definitely a county you definitely want to visit, really. And I'm not being paid to say that. I'm just fortunate enough to currently live there. Oh, I wish I had the camera recording then. My old ZX just drove the other way. Um, if you haven't seen the collection caper for the ZX, uh, really do go and check it out. Uh, I won it in a raffle for four pounds and um, it comprehensively ruined a wheel bearing on the drive home and got very exciting indeed. 
do go and check that one out. It's good to see the old girl's still going. Give her all the revs now. Ah, oh, crap. It looks awfully wet under there. Oh, I'm willing to bet that's a pushrod tube seal. It seems very one-sided. One side of the block is um, bone dry. This side is not so much. Uh, pushrod tube seal. You can just see them. You see those springs up there? Those are the pushrod tubes. Very common leak. Mm -hmm. I think I need to... Um, check um oh so, sorry someone's messaging various people are messaging me i need to check how much oil she's used and make a judgment call problem is the brakes are in the firing line for that oil leak the downside of having inboard discs uh, i did notice them groaning a bit when we came to a stop and uh, the exhaust is getting covered so when you accelerate hard up a hill that all starts burning off really not great right so we got the oil leak um, I've just gone and had dinner um, it could be the push rod tubes um, but the only way to investigate really is to start getting things off again so I'm going to take the um, wing off and um, that'll give better access I might then take the bottom cowling off um, just to check it isn't the rocker cover leaking and oil then running down inside the cowling and appearing at the pushrod tubes. I don't think it is, but you know, we, we can always check these things, can't we? Well, here we are, bottom cowling undone, but no, seems dry there. Um, so another culprit could be the cylinder head feed. Uh, they're the bolts you definitely don't want to over tighten, but that seems dry. And you can see the cowling is dry. Really, there's, a, there's a, a tiny amount of seepage, I think, uh, if we get the light under, at the bottom of the cover. But um, it's not adding up to what's spraying back over the exhaust. So, um, and indeed the brakes. At least they won't rust. So, um, yeah. It's interesting, there seems to be a drop suspended in the air. Maybe this engine's magical. So the bad news for me is all this is going to have to come off again. Um, headlamp bar, exhaust. I've got the exhaust sealed better than I've ever managed in my life. I'm not happy about having to dismantle that. But there we are. Um, get the other wing off because I'll need to dismantle the exhaust that side. Yeah. Annoying. Very, very annoying. I'm going to wrap that one up there. Um, tomorrow we shall set to trying to replace that seal and um, hopefully then it'll be good times. Don't know whether we're going to do a preemptive strike and replace the one on the other side as well. Maybe we might as well while we're at it. Um, but yeah, my mate Colin's coming over with bits. I'm very grateful for that. We should get stuck in. Uh, he's uh, another random internet man, but also a 2 severe, So not all that random. But um, yeah, he's, he's, not, he's not usurping Martin, who is the ultimate original um random internet man so uh, yeah don't get any ideas but um yeah i think i've had enough of being in here frankly um the world is looking most beautiful this evening uh, i should probably go for a walk although the midges are starting to descend the house martins chirping away up in their nests we've got two nests going on at the moment in fact i think there's a third one around here yep there's a new one right up at the top uh, that's the office window right there but um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to say that, that'll do. Uh, it's time to stop tinkering. So I'll just say thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. And um, yeah, don't forget all the merchandise and everything at hubnut.org. And I shall see you in a future video. Farewell.